Hi, welcome to this tutorial about the table Collinearity Diagnostics with SPSS Regression. In this video, I'll be showing you what this is good for. I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step approach how you can use this information in order to pinpoint sources of multicollinearity in your regression models. In addition to this video, there's a text version of this tutorial including a short reference list. The link is in the description. If you run a multiple regression, one of the assumptions you want to check is the absence of multicollinearity. With SPSS, you can do that by checking the option Collinearity Diagnostics in the Statistics dialog box for linear regression. If you do that, you will get two additional chunks of information. First, you will get two additional columns in the coefficients table. As collinearity statistics, you get the tolerance and the variance inflation factor. Variance inflation factors above 10 are seen as indicators for problem with multicollinearity. You can ignore the tolerance because it's just the inverse of the variance inflation factor. It doesn't give you any new information. In this case, we have four predictors with high variance inflation factors x1 to x4. Thus we know we have problems with multicollinearity in our data set, but we don't know where exactly. It's possible that we have one problem with all four predictors, or it's possible that we have two problems with two predictors each. You can't be sure by this table alone. And for that, for exactly pinpointing the sources of collinearity, we can use the second table collinearity diagnostics. Let's look at the different parts of this table. It starts with dimension. We have six predictors in our example and seven dimensions. What SPSS does here is a so-called singular value decomposition. It's a technique slightly similar to a principal component analysis, but it's not exactly the same. The program tries to extract uncorrelated dimensions from the predictor data of the model. And if we don't have collinearity, all those dimensions should contribute something meaningful to the variance in the predictor data set. If, however, we have multicollinearity, then one or more of those dimensions are redundant. Maybe you know the next column eigenvalue from factor analysis. Dimensions with a high eigenvalue show a large independent contribution to the data. Dimensions with a very low eigenvalue are a problem, because in that case they don't contribute anything meaningful to the data, which is a sign for multicollinearity. But it's not so easy to interpret the eigenvalues, because they depend to some extent on the number of predictors in the model. Therefore, next, we look at the column condition index. The condition index is calculated from the eigenvalues. And for this condition index, there are cutoff values. IBM writes on its SPSS help page that values above 15 show a possible problem with multicollinearity. And values above 30 are a very strong sign of multicollinearity. And in this case, we have two dimensions with high condition indexes. The last part of the matrix are the variance proportions. Here the variances of the different predictors are distributed on the different dimensions. So each column sums up to 1 or to 100%. For those dimensions with a high condition index, we look for variance proportions above 0.9. If in one row we find two or more variance proportions above 0.9, we know that those predictors have a collinearity problem. x1 and x2 both show variance proportions above 0.9, so we can presume that those two are probably linearly dependent. So now to the step-by-step -step approach. You start with the coefficients table and look in the column variance inflation factor. As long as you have two or less predictors with variance inflation factors above 10, 
that's it. If you have only two, then you know that those two have a problem with each other. No need to go any deeper than that. In this case, we have four predictors with high variance inflation factors above 10. So in order to pinpoint the exact causes for that, we need the next table. Next step, we look at the condition index. Is the condition index above 15? Yes, it's for dimension 6 and 7. So from now on, we are only looking at those two dimensions. And now, for each row, we'll be looking for variance proportions higher than 0.9. For dimension 6, we find those two. And for dimension 7, we find those two. So in this case, we know we have one collinearity problem with x1 and x2, and a second different collinearity problem with predictors x3 and x4. But it could have been different. We could have found all four high values above 0.9 on one line. In that case, we would have had one problem with four predictors, that those four are linearly dependent. If you find on one such line only one value above 0.9, that's not relevant. We are looking for pairs or groups larger than two. One thing that can happen is that you have high condition indexes, but you don't find values above 0.9. In that case, I would lower the bar to 0.8 or even 0.7. I have seen data sets where you don't get values of 0.9 or higher, even though there clearly is multicollinearity. That's it. Now you know how you can use this table, and you know the steps you can take to interpret the information there. And if you want to reread the information, you can go to the text version of this tutorial.